There is but one good in this life, and that is our eternal salvation, for which we get only one shot. And there is but one evil, and that evil is sin, because by sin we lose the grace in our souls, and we lose the ticket, as it were, into paradise. Sin has many different paths by which it approaches us, by which it comes near to us. And these paths we call temptations. Now, in themselves, temptations are harmless. They cannot harm us in any way. They cannot injure us, not even in the slightest manner. For blessed is the man, Scripture tells us, that endureth. For when he hath been proved, he shall receive the crown of life. Everything depends upon our enduring and upon our overcoming temptation. If we wish to withstand temptation, therefore, we must watch and we must be on guard against temptation, and especially against the three that Satan most frequently uses and which he used against our blessed Lord in today's Holy Gospel. The first temptation that Satan used against our blessed Lord is this. The words of Scripture are, And the tempter approaching him said, Command that these stones be made bread. This is a temptation that every single one of us, in one way or another, undergoes every single day, and perhaps more often than not, We fall a victim to this temptation to some extent or another every single day. This is the temptation to an immoderate care for the goods of this world. So some of us will have the temptation to excessive labor, to work, 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 to make sure that you have gained the social status that you want, the position at your workplace that you want. Now, obviously, there is some amount of good in this. We should be magnanimous in these things and to gain a good living for our families and whatnot. But I'm speaking of excessive labor, where that is what is always on the mind or most of the time. The other temptation is this, that we, we are tempted to have a too high a regard for this world. And this causes men to forget their last end, particularly now in a world where we're always expected to be networking. I mentioned the whole litany of it. Every, seems once a month I'm saying this, but with Facebook and Twitter and, and the cell phone the televisions, and uh, Netflix, and, and everything else, every possible gadget you can imagine out there. It is all a distraction from the one thing that matters, and that is your last end. If we do not give enough time to thinking of our last end, we will lose the whole purpose of life, and we will fail in our salvation. Gradually, the more we get engrossed in all the work that this world gives us, in all the distractions and whatnot, the more we get engrossed in those things, the more and more we think of those things, and the less and less we think of our eternal salvation. That is the gradual process that happens. Oftentimes, most of the time, without your even perceiving it, until it's too late. Signs that we are falling 
for this temptation are, are as follows. There are three signs. The first sign that we are, we have too much care for the things of this world. And too high a regard for this world is that we will begin our days without prayer and without forming a right intention. Or when we jump into the car and say our prayers hurriedly, because as we like to try to justify ourselves, there just isn't any time for prayer. Well, do you know the saying in the spiritual life? If there's, if you're too busy for prayer, well then, you're just plain too busy. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you don't pray, you are not going to be saved. The second sign that we're falling for this temptation is that we neglect Mass, we neglect spiritual reading, and we neglect the sacraments. And we all have an excuse. I'm reminded of that Gospel. When everyone's invited to the King's Supper, everyone's got an excuse. One's got a, uh, one's got a new ox, one's got a new house, one's got a wife, and they've all got to do what they've got to do, and there's no time to come and spend time with the king. Business leaves no time for prayer or for the worship of God, it seems. But again, he who's too busy to pray is too busy. And then, meanwhile, when we're falling into that temptation, temptation to sin in other ways, come at us all through the day. It is the temptation to fill the heart with temporal success. And the neglect of prayer opens doors to temptations wide open. It is important that we always take time out for Almighty God. That we do not get too caught up in this world. And this is often the case even very good Catholics get caught up in the world too much. Do not spend enough time thinking of and doing the things that really matter. This is seen all the time. The second temptation that Satan gave to our Lord was this, that he took him to the top of the pinnacle of the temple. And he, he said, cast thyself down, for it is written that he hath given the angels charge over thee, and they will protect thee, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. This is the temptation to presumption. It is the temptation to depend too much upon our own strength, and we constantly swerve off the right path, saying to ourselves all the while, well, there's no danger. There's no danger. If I, if I go and, oh, maybe I can look at the computer for just a little bit and won't be exposed to any temptations and the like. Signs that we are falling into the temptation of presumption are as follows. That we are nominal Catholics. That is, that we tell ourselves not forthright because we'll never admit it fully to ourselves, but that we tell ourselves, at least think it. Well, I'm Catholic, and I'm going to save my soul, whatever. I've got the scapula, so I'll wear it. And I'll wear it with honor, but then I'll sin and I'll sin boldly because Mary will save me. That is presumptuous. That is a sign of certain presumption. The second, the second sign that we are falling into this temptation is in the, in regards to the choice of where you will work, where you will live. Those who pay no attention to whether or not there's a place to attend mass where they're about to find a job or about to move. If they pay no attention to that, that is quite presumptuous. Because even today, 
Remember, where there is so the masses are far and few between, and every man has a job to support his family, but his first job, first duty, is to see to the spiritual needs of his family, to save their souls. So for him to move away from the mass for the sake of a job is to be presumptuous. It is to say, in effect, in effect, that you can do without the sacraments and save your soul. You can do without all the graces that come through the sacraments as long as we have a place to work. The third temptation that our that Satan sent to our Lord is this. He took him to the top of a very high mountain and said, all of these, and he points out, all of these beautiful cities I will give thee, if falling down thou wilt adore me. That's the temptation of our own day. Where even in Walmart, they say, they're selling satanic, T-shirts with images of the diabolic in Walmart. This is truly the temptation of our day. It is the temptation to self-love, vanity, and pride. And it is the temptation that ruins all of our virtuous acts and their merit. It seeks, this pride does, to make ourself the center of everything, the center of our own world, the center of our neighbor's world, and the center of God's world. We are everything. We seek honor. We seek to be praised by so many. My, my mind was truly illuminated on one occasion when I, when I was uh, working with Father Erkeley in Detroit at Our Lady Queen of Martyrs, when I was teaching in a homeschool program we had about two or three days a week, and I had as one of my students a kid who was very much into sports, very much so. And so when I dropped the name of Michael Jordan, I expected him to know who he was, because this was only in about the year 2006 when I was teaching, not long after Michael Jordan retired. And his name was known all over the world. But a few years later, when you drop the name of Michael Jordan to a child who loves sports and knows volumes of them, when he tells you that he has no idea who Michael Jordan is, you realize two things. Number one, you're getting old. <laughs> number two, number two, and spiritually, the, the, what the world holds out to us as honor and fame is so fickle. It does not last more than five years. Though you were at one point the most famous basketball player of all time. And five years later, a little boy does not even know you. To conclude, if we're convinced of this truth, that there is no honor to be given us greater than that of the heavenly crown, then we would respond to all temptations, be gone. We must have a determination, and this determination is what we lack and why we fall into temptations. You see, if we never wavered, Satan would not hope to succeed in the end. If we were so determined that we never wavered, Satan would stop tempting us, for he would have, he would have no hope of succeeding to bring down his soul to hell. But he knows that he cannot harm us by temptation, for temptation can be for us a source of merit. If he sees us wavering 
on the other hand, he tries again and again, from this angle and then that, and from this side and that one. And if this person doesn't work, he finds another one to do his bidding. And he will bring the soul down if he wavers, even once. For Satan knows well how to bring down the very firm foundations of virtue. One thing which causes him fear in it is a humble and yet a determined soul. One that placing all of his confidence in God cries out with determination to Satan, Be gone. I want no part of your malice and your sin. So my dear faithful, let us today imitate our blessed Lord who stood so courageously against all of the temptations that Satan had to offer him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.